I want you to imagine for a moment that we both invested a lot of money in July 2007. We both look at how much our investments are doing and it keeps going up and up, but our friends are telling us, guys, sell. This thing will crash and you will lose all your money. Then the crash of 2008 happens, where the money we put in drops 58% in value. Our friends are making fun of us, telling us that the stock market is rigged and everyone who invests in it loses money. Fast forward to today, even if we bought at the peak before the crash of 2008, we would be up 483% today. Now, Nowadays, you can invest in so many things like stocks, real estate, gold, even watches. So to make this easy to understand, let's break down how to start investing for beginners into three parts, starting with the basics of investing. And mind you, this isn't financial advice. So why should we invest? You and I invest so that our money can make money without us having to work extra hours at our job. Let's say we start off with a thousand dollars that we saved up from working at Walmart. We could put that money in a piggy bank or we could put it in a bank account. But the problem with that is inflation is the secret tax that makes all of our money worth less with no heads up. With $1,000, we can afford to buy a MacBook today. But in a couple of years from now, when inflation goes up, that MacBook Air is going to cost like $2,000. That means as time passes, our money loses value and we will afford less and less, which is why we ideally want to invest in something. That way, our money is put into something that grows in value on its own rather than we keep that money so that it continues to lose value on its own. One of the greatest investments that we can make is in the stock market. Remember in the beginning of the video, how our friends will be making fun of us. Despite that, today we'll be up by so much. But what does that even mean? When we are investing in stock, picture this. A company is a pie. And what we are doing is buying a piece of the pie, which will officially make us a partial owner of the company. So let's say we talked about it and we are interested in buying Tesla stock shares. By the way, Tesla is not a private company. It is a public traded company, which means the public as in you, me, Kevin, can trade Tesla stock. Now, if it were so easy, we would just go to Amazon or go to a 7-Eleven and get some Tesla stock while we buy some chips. But we can't do this. We would have to go through a dealer known as the broker. The broker is who will help us get a piece of the company and get us started investing in stocks. The good thing is we can make money from stocks in two ways. The first is when it increases in value. Like if we buy Apple stock at $50 and it goes up to $100, we would have doubled our money. The second way that we can make money from stock is called the dividend, which is similar to how our landlords make money off of us when we pay our rent every month. Just for having the stock, we collect money in these dividends as frequently as every Every month or as long as once a year. There are landlords that own hundreds of homes and we can do the same with stocks even with just one dollar. We can buy 500 stocks at the same time and this is through an index fund. Index funds are like a jar of skittles where there are all types of companies inside of it. We get a little piece of every single one of them for one low price. This makes it easier for us to look at compared to looking at a long list of companies longer than the receipts we get at CVS. A lot of people would have told us, hey, I invested all my money to this company that was supposed to make me rich, but I lost it all. Well, that's why you shouldn't just pick one single stock like Netflix or Disney. Companies come and go and index funds make it easy where they manage all of the stocks that we have in the jar. And when one goes bad, like a Skittle with mold, we take it out and we replace it with a good one. Hopefully the red Skittle and not the yellow one. This is literally what some of the people on Wall Street are doing. You know, the guys who call rich people telling them, hey, let me invest your money. They put it into these index funds because it is easy and consistent in the long run. This is way better than being one of those guys who went all in on Radio Shack. Like, where is that? that now. They were selling NFTs not too long ago. Remember those ugly apes? Yeah, things like that were worth thousands of dollars and now are worth cents on the dollar. That's right. We don't have to try and pick these stocks. Honestly, it is overwhelming and we live busy lives, right? Just because we have our favorite shows on Netflix or like some venti Starbucks drink doesn't mean that they are the best stocks to buy. So let's go back. How are we up 483% from 2007, even though the stock market crashed? The example I showed is by investing into the index fund called the SP500. This is a huge pie of 500 companies that are the top 500 in the United States. This list keeps getting updated as some companies do well, while others drop harder than our grades in high school. A lot of companies in this list you use like Nike, Amazon, and Google. We buy our kicks at Nike, order our toothpaste on Amazon, and use Google to look up how the Knicks are doing since we haven't won a championship ever since we were born. In order to be up by 483%, like we talked about, the way we get there is by buying an index fund that matches the SP500. There are a lot of them, but the most popular include SCHD, VOO, and SPY. All these are different ways to buy the SP500. Think of it like buying a computer. There is Mac, HP, and Chromebook. They are all computers that you can use to do the same kind of work, but each offer a little something extra that some people prefer over the others. For a lot of people, investing money is scary and they get it. Losing money can make us upset. It's like when you buy something and it breaks. Except with stocks, there are no refunds and you may not get your money back. But here's the thing. If you spread your money across different stocks, like putting your 
eggs in different baskets. Even if one stock goes down, others might go up, balancing things out. And there are times where you may be up overall. The stock market can also seem like a big mystery, especially if you're not used to it. The idea of it is like those guys that we imagine behind computer desks all day, like the ones in the movie, The Wolf of Wall Street, that paints a picture. That is not how it really is for most people. Once you learn more about it, just like learning any new game or sport, you can get the hang of it with some practice and learning. There are plenty of resources out there like books, podcasts, and websites that explain stocks in a simple way. A book that I like for this is The Four Pillars of Investing by William Bernstein. And I will leave a link in the description below. And if you do buy from my link, I will receive in a commission. And when you read it, let me know what you think or if you have any questions. You know, there are times that the stock market goes up and down like a roller coaster. This can be scary because you might worry about your money disappearing every single time that you see it go down. But if you are investing for the long term, like saving up for college or retirement, those ups and downs usually even up over time. It's like riding out a storm. It might be rough for a bit, but the sun usually comes back out with some money. Now, for the entire SP500 to go to zero, it would mean every single one of these 500 companies will have to completely collapse all at the same time. Think about it this way. It's like saying every single store in a huge shopping mall will go out of business at once. It's pretty hard to imagine, right? That's because companies and the SP500 are constantly working to grow and make profits. Even if some companies struggle, others are usually doing well, which helps balance things out. Plus, the stock market has historically shown that it has made recoveries from downturns. Even if there are big drops in the stock market, like during 2008, it has always bounced back eventually. So while many people worry about the possibility of the SP500 crashing, it's not something that's likely to happen overnight or wipe out all of your invested money. Getting started with anything will lead to mistakes and nobody likes making mistakes, especially when it comes to money. Imagine you had to pay $1 for each mistake we make. We'd buy a Bugatti scooter. But here's the good news. You can start small. You don't have to put all of your money at once. Start with a little bit and see how it goes. You can start with as little as $1 in the stock market. If you actually make a mistake, you can learn from it and do better next time. But the key to it is to take note of what went wrong and find a way to work around it. Like when we trip on a crack on the sidewalk, that only needs to happen once or else my face will meet the floor. Here is another thing. Sometimes when you see other people making money in the stock market, you might feel like you're missing out if you're not investing too. Like that birthday party that you heard was fun, but you didn't get the invite. But it's important to remember that everyone's situation is different and no one should be putting money that they cannot afford to lose. What works from one person might not work for the another. Take your time, do your research and make decisions that are right for you. Let's also talk about Albert Einstein's famous quote about compound interest, which he called the eighth wonder of the world because of how it can make money multiply over time. Imagine you have $1,000 and you decide to invest in stocks. Let's say your stocks grow by 8% each year, which is like $8 for every $100 that you put in. Listen carefully as this can be life-changing knowledge. In the first year, your $1,000 will grow by 8%, which is $80. So at the end of the first year, you will have $1,080. Now here's the crazy part. In the second year, you're not just earning 8% on your original $1,000, but on the $1,080 that you already had. So 8% of $1,080 is $86.40. Adding that to your $1,080, you'd have $1,166.40 at the end of the second year. As time goes on, this effect keeps getting bigger. Over time, like Donald Trump's net worth, which literally went up by $2 billion this year. In the third year, you're earning 8% on $1,166.40. And in the fourth year, you're earning 8% on even more money and so on. Now, the question that you probably have right now is, how do I get started? Before we even get to that, if you have found value in this video, please subscribe so you do not miss out on future videos on stocks and finances. And if you don't, then I won't read you this fortune. To get started, it is very easy and it is free with no fees nor contract obligations. And you can do this by going to the link in my description and sign up with public.com, which lets you buy any stocks or index funds with as little as $1. So there's literally no excuse for you not to get started. It also has a social media feel to it where you can chat with like-minded people who are also interested in investing and post about your financial journey. It is also a safe and regulated platform that you can download and get started right away. Just click the link in the description. By using my link, you can get a free stock that is worth up to $300. And that will also support my channel as I will get a commission. Thank you.